Running to my computer. Awesome. Hello, hello, hello. This is Kathy with Limitless Women Rising. And what a dynamic week we've got ahead. This is right at New Year when all of us are starting to put our sights on what we want our 2021 to look like. At the top of the list is always how do we find deeper love, love of self, and what would it look like to attract that special love into our life? So to help us, I love the title that she's brought to us to calling in the, the love, the one, and how to overcome the number one block that we put ourselves up against in finding this beautiful love. So joining us today, Junie Moon, who's a relationship coach from New Jersey. And I don't know if you've got New Jersey friends like I do, but they tell it like it is. So I love, love, love having Junie Moon here telling us like it is on calling in that love. Yeah, yeah, we, we are who we are. And, uh, <laughs> Take us or leave us. I think that's kind of the energy of a Jersey girl. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, girlfriend, because we want to know. And especially, um, you know, in the in the best of days, women, so women who are listening to this podcast are in that 50-year age mark. And, you know, we've had all the roles. We've had these relationships that may have come and gone. So how is it as we're aspiring and we're more soulful and we're looking to call in that special connection, what, how do you guide women or tell us a little bit about your journey to now doing the work that you do for what, seven years now? Yeah. Yeah. I've been um, actually working with women for over 30 doing empowering circles and transformational work. And, and after my son moved out seven years ago, uh, I said, this, this is going to be my full-time job. I've been working with women for so long. I've loved it doing workshops and and healing uh, through all these years. And when I discovered the body of work called shadow work uh, in the early 2000s, and it changed my life, I, I knew that this was the work that I wanted to make my next chapter, uh, you know, to take that work out into the world. I didn't really have that energy or the time when I was taking care of my son. And then it was like a no brainer. Um, yeah, uh, how I got into this work um, was pain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of us, right? We've, especially the ones of us, the ones that are, are trying to help others. It, you know, we've, we, I got my PhD in walking on eggshells and not speaking up, not speaking my truth, being in a relationship that was really hurtful. I mean, I would walk around with my stomach in knots on a regular basis because I wasn't getting my needs met. And I was afraid to speak up to my husband mm -hmm. because he was a really spicy dude and he would be in my face and he scared me. And I didn't have the inner tools to really stand my ground. So I micromanaged everything and I found myself 200 pounds and miserable in a five foot three body. And that was about 17 years ago. And I hit rock bottom and I thought I had a food problem, but what I discovered was it was between my ears. And so the long story short is I dug deep weekend, weekend workshops and, and reading books was not enough. I needed to go in and do the transformational work. And I found shadow work and I found out that the programming of my life, all the experiences I've had in my life have shaped me and have given me belief systems and behaviors that really squashed me, that held me back. And so I shifted. I lost the weight and kept it off for 17 years, which is a freaking miracle after that is down the scale millions of times. Does that make you like in the top one percent, I would imagine? Right, right. I don't know the stats, but it's, it's <laughs> you know, that we lose it or we gain it back. And, you know, and it's like, you know what? No, we don't have to lose it and gain it back. But I was going at it the wrong way. And, and then I realized I really needed to stand my ground and create my life. And sadly, the, re the relationship didn't last. But after I left him, what I call next level love, I experienced. Mm -hmm. I, and I now have it with the most amazing man that meets me and I get to be me and I get to relax and ask for my needs to be met. And I knew that this was a message, this was healing that needed to be out in the world. And so I'm so committed to helping women call in their next level love partner and, um, and feel that deserving yumminess of this love at this age. Yeah. 
And we're, we're right for it. It's so beautiful because I think we've come to a point where we've got so much now, the, I like to call it the wise woman wisdom of those, like you said, all the, the pains, that, the crash and, and burns that we've had that got us to a real point of clarity. So rather than going to the fear of pushing against, oh, let's not repeat that. Let's transmute this wisdom we have into calling in. And I, I love those words. Um, so tell us what that means, the calling in the love that we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. And I want to just like piggyback on what you just said, which is it really is a special time because we do have so much more wisdom. And getting back to that intuitive feminine self to be able to go, wait a second, I create my own life. I can call in, magnetize, pull in that which I want to come from that place. And that's what I mean by calling in. It's like, let's have that vision instead of us pushing, which is such a common theme. Let's push ourselves to get out there. Let's push ourselves to be online and find a, a partner, you know, and, and a lot of times we're not very nice to ourselves about, you know, how we talk to ourselves. What if we can actually be ourselves and love it and relax in this moment and that person is drawn to us, that reality is drawn to us because we know what we want. So that's the first step. You got to know what you want. We got to slow down, empty the past and really get clear about who we are now and then we can call it in. Yeah. So before the doing, before you hop on out lot, because that energy is going to be transmuted through your online profile or however you're showing up. So I love, I love that of magnetizing it to us first. Yeah. So tell us how you, you know, what you would recommend as, as we women are looking for that clarity. How do you find that for yourself and begin to be that? Yeah. Yeah. So much. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Um, let me start by saying that we really need to have a pause. We need to, to set our, our intentions of what kind of life we want. And a lot of times we don't know it because we haven't had the time to really reflect on the life that we've had and how we want it differently. And so what's really great is we've had all these experiences and we can go, hmm, I don't want to have that happen again, or that happen again, or that happen again. Well, that's great. That's great. It's a great start to, to look at some of the things that have gone down. Oh, I'm attracted to somebody who has no money, or I'm attracted to somebody that is a narcissist, or I'm attracted to somebody that just doesn't allow me to speak and hold the space for me. So we know what we don't want. And a lot of times when I say, hey, what do you want? People go, well, I don't want this and I don't want this. And that's fine. But now we need to take that, in, that information and say, well, I don't want somebody that's not going to listen to me. Ah, so I want someone that can really deeply hear me and not interrupt me and want to hold the space for me and then and to, to envision that. Because if we don't have that North Star, Mm -hmm. We're never going to find our way. And the universe is not going to go, oh, that's what she wants. We need to get crystal clear. And that is, you know, a lot of women will come to me and say, hey, help me with my online profile. Help me with the dating world. And I have some great, great tips and a lot of tools to, to help people navigate dating. But if you haven't done the inner work and if you haven't gotten clear and you haven't emptied out the past, you're going to recreate the same wheel. You're going to call in the same guy and you're going to go, damn, here I am again. So getting clear about what kind of life you want. What does this partnership look like? You wake up to a day. Are they living with you or do they have another home? Do you like to travel with them or do you like to travel by yourself? Like this is, this is the time to get so crystal clear about what would make your heart sing and how would this person be an addition to an amazing life that you have? Because it's not about finding them and having an amazing life. It's about having an amazing life with or without them. And they come in and they're like the cherry on the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or I love how you, you know, I, I relate to so much of your story of how I was showing up when I was married way back when of just not knowing <laughs> that I could show up as myself and, and have, I didn't even know how to speak what it was that was on my heart that I needed. And so slowly, I felt like my soul died in the relationship. So um, I just, I love how you said that of getting clear on starting with the things that you, you're clear. I don't want that. You know, I don't want that. And I don't want that. And then once we get the clear of being 
seen, heard, and understood fully, it's like, how do we give that to ourselves first? So that even like you said, as a single person, then you're showing up with that energy and, and it's almost like the law of attraction. And you can only attract the, the people who are going to give, reflect that back to you. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because that, this is great. And we have to do this because, well, we need to, ha- we need to have that North star and we have to do this work. And the whole thing of law of attraction is we could want this and we could have a clarity about, you know, who we're calling in, what kind of relationship we want. However, if most of our brain is unconscious, like 95% of our brain is unconscious. And in that unconscious mind is all the belief systems, all the programming that we've picked up along the way that have made us go, ooh, who's gonna want me in this 50 year old body? I'm not as pretty as I used to be. He's gonna want somebody else. Oh, I'm just not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Like if all the different things that we've experienced in our life that have given us messages of less than or challenge, that is going to work against us when it comes to calling in. So we need to have a clarity of what we want. Mm -hmm. And then we have to do what's called shadow work. We need to shine a light on the parts of us that are scared to death about really opening up, that that are really resistant about calling in somebody else because we've been hurt. And so we need to identify some of the pain, some of the challenges, some of the behaviors that you never want to do again and transform them. Yeah, and I like the word that you used, a vulnerability. It's almost like I sometimes say, you know, everything's the opposite of what it appears to be. Here we are protecting ourselves because we don't want to be vulnerable. And actually the key to our freedom is stepping into that fully of knowing that you can be your soul, your own supply of that worthiness or that that being heard and loved and appreciated. And then um, from there, when your heart is open, you get to attract somebody who's willing to be vulnerable. Really. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's a yes and too, because yes, with vulnerability is our strength. Mm-hmm. Being able to open up and let people really see us is, is what creates intimacy and connection. However, if we haven't worked with... Um, confidence building if we haven't learned how to protect ourselves in a healthy way not like the big walls we put around our our heart but the ability to take that stand and go you know what i can trust that i'm going to take care of myself if we haven't built that trust rebuilt or maybe never even had it like to be able to go you know what i can let somebody in and i know i'm going to be fine no matter what we need to foster that. And one of the, the, you know, in the title, you know, the number one way to do this, I don't remember the title I gave to you, but the number one way to call a next level of something like that, or how to break through the barriers, I don't know, um, <laughs> is to befriend the part that gets in the way. That's just give me chill. <laughs> we need to build a relationship with that part inside of us that's going, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. Because there's a part that we all have, we call the risk manager, a part that's always assessing, am I going to be okay? And if that part is on high alert all the time, what's going to happen? Nothing. We're just going to keep sabotaging. We're going to keep pushing away the great guys. We're going to be pushing away our love life. We're going to just be like, okay, let me go on a date and let me look for all the red flags and miss all the green flags. And we're going to miss out on potential connection. If we can work with that part, and it's not an if, when you do, because that's (laughs) We're inviting it in. Come on, ladies. (laughs) You can really work with that part that is the part that, does cost you dearly with opening up and moving forward. When we can get that part online and with you working together, then you have what I call strategic vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an oxymoron, but it really works. Strategic vulnerability where you could be open in a way, a conscious way that isn't so scary, that isn't so risky, strategically opening up. And so we need that. Yeah, I love the distinction that you made just there, uh, too, of protecting yourself, but it's not with the barrier and the, the heart wall. It's by being clear on who what works for you and what doesn't, and it can be as simple as that, and I think it's fascinating because when we up-level our own expectation, I love the, the title you said, that next level love, 
know for yourself that you deserve that guy. You know, we, it's easy to think, oh, it doesn't exist out there or nobody else has it. How could I get it? And, you know, set that vision for yourself. It's higher level. And then it's interesting because these, the same guy can show up. And because you've got this expectation, it gives them, it's a kindness. It gives them the space to up-level who they are as a man and invite them into a, a level of vulnerability. And I, I love the word that you you hit on that I think is, is so rare these days is intimacy. Can you flesh out a little bit more about intimacy and what, what it is and like... Yeah, I mean, how I see intimacy is in to me see, mm. allowing someone to really see you, really witness you, where you're able to reveal your true self, and they are able to do the same. And a lot of people, when they hear intimacy, they, they think sexual. And when I say intimacy, I mean across the board, the ability to meet one another soul to soul, heart to heart, in your authentic expression. And again, when you can come from that authentic place, trusting that you could just be you and there's nothing else you'd rather do than be you because you love you and you don't feel badly about you. When you could come from that confident, strong, grounded place, then you could open up and go, hey, this is me. And again, Jersey girl, this is me. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Seriously, though, like yeah. when you just relax and go, this is who I am, you know, and I'd love to get to know you. The more you can open up, the more your partner opens up and vice versa. Yeah. It's a really magical thing. That and I, I talk in terms a lot of the divine feminine. So women at this age of 50, up until now, we've been serving a lot of roles that required us to come in that masculine way of being strong and independent, or maybe that was coping mechanisms we took on because we did have the crash and burn and the man wasn't there to take care of us, you know. So it to me just opens up an invitation for us to to embody that divine feminine and know that we can receive from a man in ways that we haven't you know just our society hasn't given us that permission like give yourself permission right uh, and yet at the same time it's not a heady thing you know that's what i that's mm -hmm. the difference between why I wasn't keeping the weight off and I wasn't happy to what I have now was I couldn't just say, well, I'm going to give myself permission to be feminine and receive. Because in, in my unconscious realm, it was like, don't trust men. Yeah. He may not be there for you. Right. He might leave you. If he really knew you, if he really, you know, you might be too needy. You might be too weak. Like all of that unconscious blah, 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 blah. And so when you could befriend the risk manager who uses that inner critic to like keep you, you know, stuck, um, then you can have that permission because there's no other way. It's like, wait a second, I am so deserving and I'm, I am beautiful and amazing. As long as we have that, the wiring and that, that has us doubt ourselves, we don't give ourselves permission because it's too scary. We're afraid that if we really do open up, we're going to have our heart broken or we're going to be betrayed. And, and anything that's happened in the past is just going to come up again. So we need to heal that. We need to change that. Yeah. And it's interesting because as you're saying, <laughs> because we're not protecting against it, like what, what we fear, you know, persists in a way. So when we're got that wall up, it's, it's almost like, and that was my pattern name from way back when in my, <laughs> my childhood days, the trust issue was number one, because, you know, I had the dad that went off and it was uncanny because I was protecting myself against that so often, a hundred percent of the time I was attracting these guys and that's what would happen. So it was fascinating to watch as soon as I healed that wounding and it was about the, the dad issue. It had nothing to do with the, the guys. It, it's never even crossed my radar to have to worry about it. <laughs> so it's fascinating. Yeah. Similar story for me. My dad died when I was 14 and he oh. was my everything. And so that, that fear of being left. And so, you know, when he left, I also became that wonder woman. I can't rely on others because it's unpredictable. I never saw that one coming. Right. Yeah. And then the wow. same thing with my ultimate relationships that followed, uh, that, um, I was so scared of being left 
neglect and being left alone and not being taken care of like my dad gave to me that I also walked on eggshells and I was trying to be the good little girl be the good little girl and then no one's gonna leave you but you know we know how that story ends <laughs> yeah yeah or the the fear of being the bitch kind of a thing you know we've right absolutely. seen that model for emotional. something's wrong with you you're too you know what you're so needy you know it's like well I don't want to look like that you know and yeah. yet our needs matter. Our emotions are beautiful. We are feminine. Our emotions are our birthright. <laughs> yeah. And guys like that, you know, here we are thinking we've got to hide it or, or censor it in some way that they can um, do it. But when you give them the opportunity to see inside from your, your beautiful perspective, yeah. it, it enriches their lives. Yeah. I remember, um, are you familiar with Tony Robbins? Oh yeah. I was at a Tony Robbins event and uh, he had a woman come on stage and she was a, she was a tough girl. You know, she had a lot of masculine energy and he had three men come on the stage too. Mm -hmm. And she was just, you know, talking about her issues and blah, 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 blah. And the men were just, you know, with their arms crossed and they're listening. And then Tony doing his magic, she dropped into that vulnerable place and you literally saw the men just lean in. And of course, Tony showed that it's like, and he talked to the men and the men were like, yeah, as soon as she dropped in, I just wanted to give her a hug. I wanted to like take care of her. And, and that's the thing. It's like, well, I don't need anyone to take care of me. I'm an Island. I don't, you know, I don't want to risk, you know, leaning into anybody. And yet, there's a sweet middle ground. Yes, I don't need anybody. And I want to have a partner that I can lean into and be taken care of. And these are the, these are the dances we have to do to move away from that patriarchal, I need to be masculine and be on my own versus let me just be in that feminine, juicy, whatever that is. That yeah. Kind of authentic, authentic expression. Yeah. And then we get to see that swashbuckling man come in. And it, as Tony would say, the number one desire of men is to see their women happy. So I love that, that perspective, because I think, like you said, you can almost physically see them <laughs> lean right. in. Yes. And the, and men, what, what, what do women want more than anything? Presence. You know, that's what Tony would say. It's like, like they don't need to fix us. They just need to hold the space and, we need to train ourselves and each other, our partners to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing is the guys have been having their versions of their crash and burn. So they're getting it <laughs> at this age. It truly is a beautiful thing because they understand that they don't need to fix us, which can actually close us down. So um, yeah. when you let them know, you know, I just need you to hear this <laughs> with a don't try to fix. What a beautiful We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. So to have real true intimacy, to really be able to have a connection with another, one must be able to love oneself, to be able to really relax inside. And as long as there's a that risk manager blaring all these things in our head saying we can't, we shouldn't, something's wrong with us, that closes us and shuts us down. And so the number one way to really break through the blocks is to work with that part, to be able to, to have it see that these behaviors are working against you and then to do the healing work. I mean, in, in, in the work that I do with their specially designed processes where it's not just this heady thing where, okay, now I understand I'm like this because we go into these, these experiences that literally change the brain mapping so that you don't feel so scared, that you feel more empowered, you feel clearer and, and more trusting that love is not only possible, but it's your birthright if you choose to reach out to someone. And again, it's not about a someone versus yes. having it be yourself. So love, love, love yourself because that's what what really draws somebody into your life if that's what you choose to. Yeah, and we've talked a little bit more in the context of single women because as you mentioned, a lot of your women are like that, but it's true regardless of where you are. I've got a dear friend who, it breaks my heart because she's feeling unseen in her relation, long-term relationship, wonderful couple, and it breaks my heart that she's not feeling seen. So um, it, it's true regardless of what stage of relationship you're in, and this is available to you. But like you said, right at the beginning, it's a gift we need to give ourselves is to unplug from the day to day to, to get clear again. You know, maybe over time, the relationship has changed. Your needs have changed. Your desires and what you want from life have changed. So take the time to unplug, get clear, 
so you can plug in with that juicy. I love when you talk about it. It just sounds so yummy. You get that intimate, you know, that connection that we truly, that's what our souls desire. I think not, not this desire to be the Wonder Woman. It, it was fun while it lasted, but. <laughs> it worked up to a point and there's gold in being Wonder Woman. It's great that we can hold our own and, and take care of ourselves. And it's really amazing when we can open up and receive and have that support and have that connection. Yeah. yeah. We can have it all. We really can. Yeah. And it starts with filling up our own cup because if our cup is empty, that's what we're um, advertising out into the world. Yeah. That's what our profile is going to energetically put out is I need to have somebody fill me up versus I've got this great life that I've created and I love where I'm at. And wouldn't it be nice, you know? Yeah. If we call in somebody new. I, I like the two words you just use energetic profile. So let's up level our energetic profile before we go out there. And then another word that you um, brought up the word and I think sometimes we don't want to go into relationship because we're afraid we're going to give up. Like for me, I'm about freedom. And I like that time alone. A lot of us women are getting into that spiritual aspect. So we need that time to go within and do our little studies or our sacred practices. Like, how do you help women bridge that fear of having to give up something in order to have that relationship? It has to, be with, it has to do with clarity. You know, if you really know what your need, what, what kind of life you want. I mean, I had this one client that said, you know, who's going to want me? I really want to live by myself. And I really don't want to have to, you know, give away more than, you know, two, three days a week. I really, I, I do this, I do that. And, you know, who's going to want to have a relationship with someone who just wants a couple of days a week. And I'm like, there's a man out there that would be thrilled to have his own place and see you for a couple of days a week. That's, what I'm talking about. It's like, like, mm -hmm. what do you want? And if your freedom is, is important, my freedom is extremely important to me. <laughs> and, um, and having my own space is really important to me. And I live with a really amazing man. Uh, I needed to know that about myself and I needed to have conversations with him about how might this look and what my needs are. And does that fit? We don't want to have this conversation a year into the relationship. We want to have a sense early on. Yeah. So again, I believe we could have it all. We can, and it starts with knowing your bottom line. And if your freedom is important, if you want to, you want to have your own room. I mean, I, you know, as much as he would love to sleep with me, he snores. So fresh out the gate, I said, I, I, I wish you could sleep with me, but that's your bedroom and this is mine, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, right. And so some people, some people are horrified. They're like, what you, you don't sleep together. And I'm like, I wouldn't sleep. I'm a really light sleeper. That's a bottom line for me. It's like my sleep menopause, all that. I must have my own chamber. The queen must sleep. And my knight has his own chamber, you know? I love it. I love that. So know what you want. Know what, what you're willing to, to you know, bend on yeah. and what your deal breakers are. I mean, that's so important. Yeah. And it's funny, I think, um, you know, just having that expectation that, you know, when you're together, you're sleeping t together or, you know, so many a litany of different expectations of what it needs to look like. And when you're honest with yourself, like, you know what? two to three days a week is perfect for me. It gives them permission to say, oh my gosh, I never even knew that was possible. Yeah, that would be work great and, for me too. And they might be thinking, gosh, you know, I don't know if I want to give up my freedom. I don't know if I'm ready for a full-time relationship, but I would like to have somebody. And suddenly it's like, oh, wow, I can have that too, you know? Yeah. That's cool. I mean, there's somebody that I was just talking to the other day, a friend of mine, and he was saying, and it's working for him, but you know, he hardly sees the woman that he's in relationship with for a couple of years now. Um, you know, they see each other a couple of times a month, but they're committed to each other and this works for them. I mean, that certainly would not work for me, yeah. but it works for them. So great. If you're happy and this is the kind of life you want to create, we need to start there and then we need to unpack the past so it doesn't haunt us in yeah. the future. What a beautiful space of invitation you've just created for us. Oh my gosh. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your, your work. If people wanted to connect and, and learn more about you, where, where can they go? What, what should they do? 
Sure. Um, well, I, I work with everybody, but mostly I am really working on women in midlife, women that are starting over that really want to create their next chapter, their next love chapter on their terms, feeling vibrant, feeling whole, and cleaning up the past so they really can choose what they want. And so we do special, like I said, specially designed processes. I do this whole relationship blueprint exercise to get them so clear on yeah. what they're wanting. And, uh, and then, you know, I, I give them the dating tips and tools and strategies so that they can have quality dates because it's such a waste of time when you don't know what you're doing. So um, the best way to find me is at you know my website, coach Junie Moon, J-U-N- coach Junie moon.com and then you know on social media i'm love coach Junie moon i'm i'm pretty much everywhere there's a lot of resources on my website yeah. there's my podcast that you'll find on my website my midlife love out loud so there's a lot of really cool stuff out there i even have a facebook group called Find Fabulous Love After 40. It's a private yeah. Facebook group. And I do a lot of free um, trainings there. So that's the best way to find me. And I believe that we have a, a gift that we're going to offer to them, right? Yes. So it is your ebook. Let's see. Find Fabulous Love After 40 guidebook. And she gives you in this guidebook, 10 easy steps proven to help women create amazing love after 40. Because ladies... We got this wisdom now. It is time for us to rise up and know we deserve that next level of love. And it doesn't have to come with compromise. We can have it all. You can have this beautiful intimacy and not give yourself up and actually bloom and, and thrive in a way that we haven't before. So. Absolutely. And that ebook, I just want to say, it's not just a let me read ebook. Yeah. Those 10 steps, I guide you. It's a workbook. And it's not like this long, oh my God, arduous hours workbook, but it is 10 easy steps to start this dialogue with that part I was telling you about, about that risk manager, so that you can lower the volume of your inner critic and really have it work for you, not against you. So it's a very transformative workbook that I'm giving you access to. Really encourage you to just not read it, but to do it. And it could be life-changing, life-changing. Awesome. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been a complete delight. And I know women are gonna get so much out of this. Absolutely. Get that, the guidebook and allow yourself to invite this in now. Thank you again, Junie. You're, 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 you're so welcome for having me. <laughs>